Yeah, so hello. Um, what am I trying to say? I suppose at the beginning of most uh, YouTube videos, you'll usually hear some kind of introduction with some kind of music. It's usually that kind of music that has some kind of high-pitched squeaky voice, some kind of female singer that's been uh, frequency shifted and reverb beyond all recognition, with the backing track of some music that some DJ stole from his grandfather's records or something. But I'm not going to do that. I personally find long, unnecessary, repetitive introductions quite irritating, so I refuse to make one. Instead, I'll just complain about it for a longer period of time than one would have taken up, because that makes perfect sense. So anyway, hmm, I should probably stop waffling and start talking about something slightly more meaningful. Although I don't plan to stop adding in lots of unnecessary verbal fibre into this video. I call it verbal fibre, as opposed to dietary fibre, which helps you digest food. I believe all of my unnecessary waffling assists in the digestion of information, gives your brain a bit of time to fully comprehend whatever I said, and then you can ignore the mumbo jumbo that I say afterwards. And then hopefully if I disperse my little nuggets of wisdom among the shaft, I can uh, hold your attention for a longer period of time, because I'm selfish that way. Although wisdom is kind of a relative term, I think. My wisdom is probably relative wisdom to a koala with insomnia. I used a koala because, apparently, 40% of their cranial cavity is empty space. Every other mammal known basically contains more brain per head volume. I mean, it's really weird. They also have quite a smooth brain without any creases in it. Apparently, they're so stupid that if you put a plateful of gum leaves in front of them, they wouldn't know what to do with them. They just look at them. Because they're not attached to a branch, they don't recognize them as food. Now I'm thinking, because koalas only eat leaves that contain the highest concentration of the eucalyptus oil known, I wonder if they are highly flammable. The koalas, that is. They probably ignite like a car tire. But I tell you, it's not something I'm willing to try. Actually, I hope I never find out. Okay, now I'm going to actually talk about what my original intention was. Yes, as you can see here, I'm drawing my life away. Yes, this is just one of those videos where you get to watch someone draw in a time lapse. And they talk a lot. You've probably gathered that already. Okay, so I'd like to talk about art block. Or artist block, I should actually say. Because the block is always on the artists, not on the art itself. I'll start that again. So I would like to talk about artist's block. What is it? There are many... There were many times in my life where I thought I had artist's block, but I wasn't actually correct. I've always had something to draw. The moments where I thought I had artist's block were actually moments of me just being tired, basically, and worn out. That'll sap your motivation like nothing else. You jump in your car, you turn the key, and you've got no fuel in the tank. Because you've been doing other things all day, and it's now, you know, late at night, and my body is begging for sleep. But after you solve that problem, if that even was a problem for you, you might find yourself jumping in your car, all eager to go somewhere, and then you discover that you don't know where to go. You want to drive somewhere, because you have good memories of enjoying driving, but you're at a loss as to what your destination should be. You are uninspired. Now, I hate to tell you this, but I have never had that problem. I've always had something to draw, because I've always found myself slightly detaching myself from the world and inventing my own. Little stories, tales, strange scenarios, and I've always found that to be a great source of inspiration. And making up a story to get yourself inspired is quite an easy thing to do, from my experience anyway. Just give yourself some time to stare out that window of yours and do nothing else. Just think, what would happen if, etc. And a story isn't going to come to you with a beginning and an end immediately. No, you have to start somewhere. You always have to start with a very small, seemingly insignificant idea. 
which you can usually just get from your surrounding environment. And don't you go scrolling the internet, social media, for the sole purpose of getting inspiration. It just ends up being procrastination 90% of the time. You've probably already absorbed enough visual information throughout the day to get inspired with. You just need to give yourself some time to digest that information just by sitting down and doing nothing and just thinking about it. It doesn't take ages either. Yes, yeah, so coming up with a story is, you know, quite an easy process. You have to start with a small idea, as I mentioned earlier, but then I got sidetracked, and you just continually build upon it. You ask yourself, what could happen? What if? Who? What? Why? Where? When? Those kind of things. So I'll just try and make one up right now as a demonstration. So let's just, uh, just imagine a gardener digging in his garden. Is it, wait, is it his garden? Could be someone else's garden. Okay, he's a gardener. He's a paid gardener. Yes, he's being paid to dig in someone else's garden. Mm. Now, if he's digging, what could he possibly dig up that would make the story more interesting? What are things that get buried in the ground? Pipes, a box, a big box, a coffin. His shovel impacts a large empty container. Oh, what's in the container? Could it be a body? Nah, too cliche. What else could it be? What else is underground? A cellar? Could it be, yes, could it be an unused cellar? Or a cellar that hasn't been used for a hundred years or something, full of antique wine. The gardener opens the underground door and walks down an ancient flight of stairs brushing the cobwebs out of the way. He sees with the light of his torch, which he, for some reason, he keeps on him, just for this very scenario, an ancient underground cellar full of delicious antique wine. Should the story end there? Is that enough inf inspiration for me? Hmm. What else could be underground? Maybe he finds a treasure map. Nah. Maybe he sees something interesting on the bottle. Maybe he sees his own name on the bottle like his family name. So the wine technically belongs to him? No. Nah. Maybe he finds out that some vast fortune belongs to him from an ancient wine business. No. Nah. Or, or maybe he hears noises underground in the cellar. Because there could be other things underground. Could be a whole world underground. I mean, we've been building underground rooms for like thousands of years. Caves, catacombs, all sorts of things. Subways even. Subways, I like that idea. The gardener hears muffled human voices coming from the furthest wall at the end of the cellar. He presses his ear against the dusty brickwork and hears distinct voices. As he is leaning upon the brickwork, the brickwork gives way and he falls through the thin skin of bricks into a long dark tunnel that has a light glistening at the end of it. He follows the light and enters an old underground subway full of disheveled people. So why are these people disheveled? Um, I reckon what would, what would be a great idea is that like the homeless move into an underground subway and like they start up their own civilization there. Because some subways, are, you know, they get replaced. Ancient tunnels that run underneath cities. What would stop people from moving down there and living in there? Hmm? That's an interesting idea. You could do all sorts of things underground, couldn't you? How would they power the lighting down there? could probably just steal some from some underground power cables. You could earn a living by panning for gold in the underground sewers, coins, rings, notes of money people accidentally flush down there. Anyway, you get the point. There's a bit of inspiration for you. Why don't you draw a bunch of uh, people secretly living in an underground, unused subway? There you go. Like those really old subways from like 100 plus years ago, you know? And I developed that just from thinking about a man digging in a garden. So it can be done. I mean, what you've been watching me draw for the past I don't know how long is basically another example of the same process. I decided to do uh, Inktober because I have never managed to finish it before. If I'm successful, this will be my last attempt because I plan to draw a lot anyway. The first image for this uh, story, which quickly turned into a comic, was basically just two people in spacesuits digging up goo on a planet. That was all. The goo quickly turned into a shape-shifting carnivorous plant after a few panels. I had no idea that it was going to go in that direction. It just happened. And then it clinged to the outside of the spacecraft. And now the hero has to find a way to dispose of it. 
before she brings it back to Earth, which would be disastrous. Is she going to succeed? Should she succeed? An initial failure would not make the story a lot more interesting. I mean, who wants to read a story about someone who just pulled it off first time? Yeah, it was easy, no challenge. Like, just imagine you're reading about someone who gets charged by a bear, and the bear's coming at him, he's about to swipe him out, but the man has a gun, and he shoots the bear. What happened then? Uh, the bear died. Oh, is that it? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. It would be a lot more interesting if the bear swatted the gun out of his hand before he managed to shoot him. How will he defeat the bear? Oh wait, he doesn't defeat the bear. The bear eats him, because it was the bear telling the story all along, and he was the hero. Ah, you didn't see that coming, did you? No. Ah. No, that's a terrible ending. Anyway, once you start using stories as uh, inspirational tools, you don't really have to illustrate the entire story. You can just pick out your favourite frame from that story and use that as inspiration. Because after a while, you'll get quite good at um, coming up with your own stories. I mean, not all of them will be good, but they don't have to be. Just one tiny part of them has to be good enough for you to illustrate it. So in conclusion, if you just sit and think and do nothing else to properly digest your own thoughts, something will come out. That kind of came out wrong. Sorry, it's just the mental imagery of digesting something and then something coming out later, which didn't go too well. Just I need to, need to work on my metaphors, I think. Yeah, anyway, just do that. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, it'll take a lot less time than watching this video, so there's a good idea. All right, I might go now, do some of that myself. Okay, goodbye.